I want to thank the chair and the ranking member. Uh, and I, I think this really, this hearing is an example of your leadership and the recognition that this issue is much more important to our country than our last election. And, and I think one of the uh, panelists said that this is really about our future elections and also our standing in the world. And with this in mind, I think that um, our NATO allies would benefit from an investigation, the 9-11 style investigation that's in the coming <laughs> Swalwell bill. And I'm hoping that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will join in the call for that. And I think about uh, Estonia. Uh, I had the honor of visiting your country and going to the uh, Cybersecurity Center. And I know that um, a lot of countries around the world studied what happened to Estonia. And I think just as we studied what happened to Estonia, we need to study what happened here in the United States. And I believe that uh, one of the panelists said that this was Russia's most successful uh, intervention in an election. Um, I also know, I think it was Mr. Doran who said a few times that the interference in our election was not about picking winners and losers, but about creating chaos and undermining the confidence. And when I hear you describe that, I I'm not just thinking about the election, but I'm frankly thinking about the last 45, 46 days, because the chaos has continued. And in terms of undermining the confidence, one of the things that is so perplexing to me is that I can't understand why the president contributes to that. So saying things like three million people voted illegally, uh, the crazy tweets that we are all experiencing day to day, it makes me wonder whether or not there's ongoing involvement of Russia in the administration. And I wanted to know if some of the panelists could uh, could comment. A lot of people question whether or not the president is compromised, whether or not the Russians have some information uh, on the president. I think about the uh, unbelievable business entanglements that it seems as though we are learning more and more about every day, and I want to know your opinions about that. I want to know whether or not there's other examples around the world of where Russia has intervened and, and one of the ways that they have continued to have influences because of business entanglements. I also wonder if there are other, other people People around the United States, other business folks that have such deep uh, involvement, financial involvement. One of the, the theories out there, I don't, I don't know that it's a theory, I think it's really fact, which is um, Trump's business practices before winning the election was so bad, his number of bankruptcies, that no one in the United States would lend him money. And he had to go over, and he's in hock, uh, not just to the Russian government, but also uh, to um, individuals um, in Russia. And so I wanted to know if the panelists could comment about that. And maybe Mr. Doran, Ambassador Baer, I mean, if we have time, maybe everybody can, but if we could start with you too. I'll be very brief. Uh, when, uh, when I say that Vladimir Putin wants to create chaos and division among our ranks, I would include Europeans with us. Uh, our frontline allies in Europe are part of the Western alliance that stands against uh, Vladimir Putin. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, you asked uh, a number of questions. One is about the continuation of Russian malign influence, and I think right. that is something that an investigation would, would expose. We know that Russian intelligence uses WikiLeaks as a distribution platform, and we've seen the attack on our intelligence agencies this week. Right. And obviously, that is a sign of the continuation of Russia's attempts to foment discord and, uh, and chaos. And the important thing here is what they're trying to do is deprive us of the kind of civilized, fact-based debate that our democracy depends on uh, by feeding garbage into the system and causing us to divide in ways that aren't about civilized fact-based debate. Um, and, and so I would see those efforts as ongoing. I think, again, we're dealing with two sets of questions here. One is, what is the nature of the Russian malign influence, past and present, on the United States, particularly with a focus on the 2016 election, where we know that they made a concerted effort? Before I run out of time, do you think this president is compromised? Uh, I, that is something that is not in my area of expertise. Obviously. There have been a number of administration officials who have had covert meetings with the Russians. That raises questions. That, that is a separate investigation, a criminal slash... Uh, Could they have information on him that if it comes out, it is so overwhelming that he is compromised? I think the American people deserve to know that. It's not, it, it, it is not something that I'm capable of answering for you today. Thank you. Anybody else? 
I would just m mention that I read a Rolling Stone article this morning that said there's a great deal of speculation about what might be true that is not yet established and that it's a very high wire and a long way down. And I hope we have better sources than Rolling Stone. <laughs> Thank you. Chair, 